Hi friends, welcome back to the channel and to another video where Sanji tries to give questionable advice. For those who don't know me, I'm currently in my sixth year of uni, which is pretty depressing. Anyway, today I'm going to talk you guys through the story of how I used to be someone who was all about the 5am wake ups and the hustle culture and how I really transitioned and found a lot more happiness in the simple things and really putting myself first. And I'm also going to touch on one principle which has completely transformed the way that I study. And by that, I mean that this principle has literally decreased the amount of time that I study by about 80% this year. So let's start off my story in undergrad biomedicine. I think my drive for the grind really started when I missed out on getting into undergrad med by just a few marks. And I know that it was my fault. Like, I was really lazy in high school. Like, shockingly lazy. I'd only really study the night before tests, and I would spend my days playing games, watching TV shows, and sleeping. And I think what that taught me is that I had the potential to do really well if I put in the effort. But personally, in retrospect, I think that I took it just a little bit too far. Like, I literally live my life according to this Will Smith video. You would not be outworked. I will not be, out, be yeah. outworked. Right. Period. Yeah. You know, you might have more talent than me. You might be smarter than me. You might be sexier than me. You might be all of those things. You got it on me in nine categories. But if we get on the treadmill together, <laughs> right, there's two things. You're getting off first yeah. or I'm going to die. It's really that simple. So I definitely took that attitude towards my personal development and reading and self growth and things like that. But where I really hammered down on it was with my academics, because that's where I felt that I could make the most difference to my life. So in undergrad, I was the type of person who would do his lectures right away, but I would also write notes on every word that the lecturer said. I was the type of person who would get to uni at 7am after waking up at 5am. And I was the type of person that would grind for every little mark and to squeeze every little bit out of my grades that I could. So something I used to do is that I used to time block the few weeks before exams and I would record how I spent every 20 minutes of my day. Back when I was grinding, I think that this really served as motivation because I could always work towards filling out those blocks just a little bit more than I did the day before. I didn't want to leave any regrets on the table. But my problem is, is that unlike most people in medicine, I feel like I wasn't really gifted with great memory. After doing a lecture or going to a tutorial, like I would be surprised if I could retain that information for more than 30 minutes. Back then, like I would have to repeat my Ankies at least three times before I even began to feel comfortable understanding the topic. And in the end, the results were pretty worth it. I graduated with a 4.0 GPA and I got into my dream course of doing medicine at one of the best unis in Australia. But as I kind of reflected back on my journey, I realized that I'd sacrificed just maybe a bit too much to get to that point. So for example, I would put socializing on the back burner and not go out every time that someone invited me because I was so focused on getting the grades that I wanted to get. That was kind of compounded by the fact that I'm a bit of an introvert, so I didn't want to go out all the time anyway. But the other thing is that I think I stopped having as much fun at home as well because I was spending less time doing the things that I enjoyed, like playing games, watching TV, and just generally Generally taking care of my mental health. And in retrospect, probably one of the worst justifications I made was in regards to my exercise. I would essentially stop working out a month before exams and turn into a potato. Like, the justification was that I had too much on my plate and I should be studying for exams or reading a book or something like that. And it's just interesting looking back on yourself in retrospect because I realized that I really had a toxic productivity mindset back then. The most important thing to me was making the most out of my day and everything else was secondary. And now that I'm in medicine, where the workload is way more than it was back in biomed, I've kind of realized the importance of taking a step back, focusing on yourself, and finding balance. So what I think has completely redefined how I organize my time and how I actually spend my life is the Pareto Principle, or the 80-20 rule. Essentially, this rule states that 80% of your results comes from 20% of the work that you do. So I used to be the type of person that would put in 100% of my time and effort into the thing that I wanted to do, and in return, I would probably get about 100% of the result that I expected. But on the other hand, that also meant that I didn't really have much time for myself and the things that I enjoyed. When you put in that level of effort, it always leads to some sort of sacrifice. So anyway, according to the 80-20 rule, what I did is I really looked back and reflected on the things that I could do to maximize 
the quality of time that I spent studying. So I could spend the time that I wanted doing things outside of medicine. Things like socializing, going out, going on hikes, and even starting projects like this YouTube channel. Like I can comfortably say that despite the fact that I had a really heavy workload last year and I had full-time placement, I still could find time in my day to relax and do these things that I enjoyed. And of course, how we use the 80-20 rule will change from person to person, and it will depend on the techniques that we use to study. But this is what I found worked for me. Like, as I said, I used to go through hundreds of Anki flashcards every single day. I memorized content word for word, and by the time it came to exams, I could probably dictate my lectures right back at you. But after reflecting for ages, I realized that it was three things that made a massive difference to my study. It was the 20% that gave me 80% of my results. And these three things were making summaries, watching YouTube videos, and doing questions. So after I reflected for ages and finally came to that realization, it was such a relief to cut out the hundreds of hours that I would spend doing Anki's before my exams and condense that into just a few dozen hours in the weeks leading up to my exam. So just to go through this in a bit more detail, especially for people who are struggling and want to try out some new study techniques, the first thing that I would do is I would strategically go through each lecture one by one. So what I would do is I would make a half page summary on the most important things that the lecturer said during that entire one hour lecture and I wouldn't allow myself to write more than half a page. So I was doing this unconsciously back then but now that I kind of look back on it I realize that I'm applying the Pareto principle here as well. You know I was forcing myself to find 80% of the value of the lecture in just 20% of the content and summarizing that into half a page. So what I realized is that most lectures just like most books and videos are just filled with fluff and I was forcing myself to get rid of that fluff and just focus on the most important things. Then I would just learn those summaries as best as I could and anytime I didn't understand a concept I would watch a YouTube video on it. If I didn't understand heart failure there's literally hundreds of videos out on YouTube that could teach me the concept, especially osmosis. Osmosis saves my life every single day. Every time I found a difficult concept, I would turn it into a question on Notion. And if you guys want to learn more about using toggles on Notion to make questions and study, click on this card right about there. So for example, if I didn't know the signs of heart failure, I would make a question called what are the signs of heart failure and write down the answer in the toggle. I would make these questions as I studied and I'd force myself every morning to spend one hour on these questions because these are the things that I didn't know. So once again, I didn't really realize it back then, but I was applying the Pareto principle because I was forcing myself to spend 20% of my time studying the things that I didn't know, which is the 80%. And I found that I got a lot of results from that. And I'd also spend one hour at night doing questions from random question banks like Pass Medicine and BMJ. So together, I think that summaries, YouTube videos and making questions on the 20% of content that I didn't know saved me so much time last year. Like I definitely only spent about a fifth of the time that I normally spend studying and I still achieved 80% of the mark that I normally achieve. So for the extra time that this gave me to do other things as well as just take care of my mental health amongst the pandemic and the lockdowns last year, I think that this was definitely worth it. But on the other hand, I completely understand that studying for medicine and studying while you're in medicine are two completely different ball games. Because when you're trying to get in, every little mark matters because you're competing with people who are also ridiculously smart and who are also trying their hardest. In Australia, like obviously you have to think about your uni marks, but you have to think about other things as well, like the GAMSAT and interviews. And then in other countries like the US and the UK, you have to think about the USMLE and the UCAT as well. Whereas once you're in medicine, the only competition you really have is yourself and making sure that you better yourself every day to become a better doctor. This could either be through gaining knowledge or talking to patients and improving your rapport or even taking care of your own mental health so you'll have the strength to take care of others. But I'd argue that it's important to have this no competition mindset when you're trying to get into medicine as well. It's really easy to become stressed and not think about your mental health when you think about the competition. But I found that focusing on myself rather than the competition and putting in the work every day to improve my studying techniques on my interview skills and my general health, I found that I was able to do a lot better than I would if I was just focusing on the competition all the time. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Let me know what you found most interesting in the comments below. Thumbs if you enjoyed it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.